vigor, with energy, and with every single resource that she had at her disposal. Let's, let's look at her faith. Her, her dad was a lay pastor in the Methodist Church. And um, one of the things she has said that who, the person that has influenced her the most when it comes to her political career is actually her father, who was also a local councillor in Lincolnshire. Tell us more about her background and how it actually influenced her decisions when it came to policy making. The father was a point blank Christian. He didn't hide his conviction. He didn't ha hide his faith. He didn't hide his, com his, uh, his commitment. He made sure that the children, when they were growing up, had to go to the morning service. They have to go for youth service. Then they have to go for the afternoon service. Mrs. Thatcher went to church every Sunday on the average of five times, five different activities. So that grounded her beliefs. That knew, told her, look, there are people that are less privileged and needs to be helped. There are people that have already made it that you see, you don't have to legislate or lead for the top people. You have to lead or make provisions for people that are aspiring. That's one thing that is missing today in our politics because if you see a great leader, always trace the root. If you see a great tree, look at the root. How was the root laid? What was the foundation that was laid? It was a Christian faith, there was no, no, no compromise about that. You have to learn the foundations of the truth. You have to know that truth is not relative. If you know that truth is not relative, there are clear red lines. Love your neighbor as you love thyself. Make sure that you are doing unto others as you have them do unto you. Those were the guiding principles that informed her policies. And it showed all the way through her entire life. She still had her commitment to her faith. I, I just wonder if she had not, you know, brought about the changes when it comes to education. For example, one of the things she did is she said the money has to follow the pupil. Yes. If she had not done that, what would have happened to our educational system today? It would probably be uh, as bankrupt as most of the, the, the fallen nations. You know, nations come in, in empires and then they fall. Because if you don't have education right, it means the next generation will be unable to carry forth the policies of the previous generation. She insisted without any doubt, without any shadow of that. Remember, she was a double graduate. She was a chemist and then she came back and became a barrister. So that tells you more about the personality because most people, once they've pursued one career, they're very happy, they're satisfied. So I've gone to the end of my career. No, she had this insatiable drive to be able to achieve and accomplish things. So as far as education was concerned, if you didn't have Mrs. Thatcher, we would never have had Ofsted because they the, would have just run an education system as another social service or another group of civil servants trying to spend the money of the government without clear targets, without wanting to say, look, these are the standards we want to achieve. Without Mrs. Thatcher, we would not have had the so-called open university. Open university was going through a terrible time and would have been shut down if you had somebody that was not convinced. That's the key thing. She knew what she stood for. And if she was unable to engage with people and say, okay, let's do it this way, she went her way. And that's the tag called Iron Lady. That's what they call controversial. If they cannot persuade you to do what they want you to do, they refer to you as controversial. She, she was not controversial in terms of uh, dealing, dealing with issues. She had clear ideas of what to do. And she didn't want any man to undermine her femininity. Nobody, no man in the cabinet would want to try and undermine her and say, oh, she's a girly lady. No, because most women at that point in time were very submissive to the men's conviction. When she challenged the men and took them on and defeated them on the first occasion, second occasion, and third occasion, then some men started waking up and a few people mounted a campaign against her. But really? no, no, no matter what anybody says, Mrs. Thatcher did more for the educational system and lifted the British educational system up to a par that you now had international fees being charged in that time. So Britain really became an international icon because it was deep in. They, had, they were elite universities, but the influence, the global influence, it's one thing for you to have an elite university, it's another thing for you to have global mm -hmm. influence spreading. So it was not just British education, it was British education for the whole world. And she did, and, and, and she, she, she exported the educational value, she ed exported the educational culture, she opened up 
the teaching and the training of young men and women from outside the United Kingdom, who, which came here, sat under the tutelage of uh, British academics and professors, and went back home to implement or be influenced by such policies. Really, how can our politicians of this day imbibe some of her convictions and apply them in our environment? It would be hard not. It would be very, very, very hard. hard. Yeah, very hard to, 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 to follow because uh, most politicians today are interested in being in power for the sake of power. She was there for the sake of her convictions, her philosophies, and the need to change and change root and branch. That was why she never lost an election. No, she never. Every single election she took on, she won. She was a formidable campaigner. Because, back to the word again, self-confidence, self self-conviction, and drove the policies of the Conservative Party and overhauled the policies of, of, the, of the Conservative Party. So remember, they were now saying she was now a Thatcherite. You say somebody is a Thatcherite, you say Thatcherism, not conservatism. Because tourism was talking about one nation uh, um, uh, country, but she came in with policies that were clearly identified, very distinct from the traditional conservative thought policies, and pursued it and drove it and made sure that not, not one child, not one child in the British system will go without any form of education. She was able to, she was ready to generate another stream of learning, another type of education if students did not fit into the mainstream education that was available then. So nobody should be in the, under any illusion that she wanted a 100% educated uh, um, state. She wanted every single person to be educated because if you are in the educated, you are independent. You are able to articulate your views and you are able to pursue your, your dreams. Tell us some of the features and distinctive features really about her personal Christian education. Okay, now she believed the act of worship as an integral part of learning. You know, today they're, they're trying to divorce and trying to separate, oh, this is a morning assembly, and then this is the learning of algebra, learning of, of, of biology. No, she believed that there is no way you can teach in a vacuum. You have to teach with a respect to whoever created that body of knowledge that you are, you are you're trying to acquire, or whoever created the objects you are trying to study. Because you can't say, I want to study leaves, and you don't know the origin of plants. You've got to know, acknowledge the origin of plants. And the f another, uh, um, uh, another um, point that a lot of the media, mainstream media, have glossed over is the fact of her Somerville background. If you've ever been to Somerville College in Oxford, again, you know how her character was formed and how her Christian views. She can never divorce her Christian views from her personality. Because we now we have people, one minute, they are Christians, and as soon as they get into power, they're forsaking every single thing they learned. And then when they're back off power, then they remember their views. Which means it's all about conviction here. Strength of conviction, ability to be able to take the flak. Because if you're not able to stand for what you're convinced of, then you will sell yourself to a false doctrine or a false living. She had her conviction. If she opposed you, she brought her points in. She was a great debater. Why? Because if you look at the life of Paul in, in the New Testament, you understand that Paul was another person that was a great debater. Paul was able to almost convince the, 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 the king, say, oh, I'm almost persuaded of what you are saying or what you are doing. So you can see that her conviction was based on a found foundation. She knew what was good for the community. She knew what was good for the individual. She knew that the individual had the ability to tell what was good or what was bad and how to pursue it. If she empowered that person, then she'd be okay in terms of pursuing her dream and achieving what she wanted to achieve. Another thing she brought in that most people have conveniently forgotten, and nobody's mentioned this in all the reviews I've seen, is that she introduced what is called now the national curriculum and national curriculum levels. Really, yeah. <laughs> now, before her time, we just went to school. We studied and then we learned. And we studied and we learned. We didn't have any way of quantifying what you learned and what you were going to aim through. What you learned and how you're going to develop on what you've learned. What you learned and how that can tie up with your child development. We just had regional uh, policies here and regional policies there and then whatever happened, that was fine. But she said, no, we should have a body of knowledge that should be minimum for every single child in the education system. So when you see here people talking about I'm, I'm level five or level six, what they really mean is 
National Curriculum Level 6, mm -hmm. National Curriculum Level 5. That never happened. There was no such thing before Mrs. Thatcher. So if, if we are going to be grateful, we must be grateful to her for that, for, for really bringing out how we can make learning measurable, how we can determine the body of knowledge that we acquired, how we can then work on that, how we can then schedule, so okay, each academic year will move you one level or half a level or a quarter of a level. Up. We, we now have, no, nobody would have ever thought of that. So the fact that I said, oh, she was longest serving politician, I, I, I'm very uncomfortable with that. She was a leader. She never ever allowed any single person, especially when she knew she was convinced to, to dissuade her of anything. She went to Europe. She looked at the way Europe were doing things. She came back. She formed that policy. And when she disagreed with Europe, she made it very clear to them. There was no point saying, oh, let's agree. Let's, let's put up a front and say, oh, we are united. And then two, two days later, three days later, divisions are, appear. No, we had to make sure that, yes, if we know the truth, if we know what is best for a group of people, that should be exported to every single child or every single individual, every single family. So separating people and trying to classify people was not part of her. her gist. And so she offended quite a few people, yes, a few, she, a few she, powerful she, individuals. She actually did. And mm. it was interesting how she was able to effectively lead her cabinet, all male cabinet, and yet she was a lady. Yes. Now that talks about conviction, the strength of her conviction and honesty. Let's look at some of the things that she did in her political career, especially when it came to influencing others and encouraging other women to join politics. Most people have said that Mrs. Thatcher did not encourage women, but contrary to that, there were so many women today, so many women female politicians, who actually said it was Mrs. Thatcher that encouraged them to join politics. I don't know where they, they, they live. I don't know what planet they were in. If they say that Mrs. Thatcher never inspired women, I, I find that extremely difficult to, to even begin to contemplate. Because there were a lot of girls, like the, the so-called girl power that came out, the girl band that came out, sang with literally lyrics from her. Her quotes. I can never ever believe that because be, remember another thing that most people have forgotten that Mrs. Satcher brought in television into the House of Commons. So she exposed every single woman to body politic. When they asked her what about combining motherhood and, and politics, she she looked at them and said, Look, every single school holiday is synchronized with the House of Commons and the House of Lords. So when the students are on half term, I'm able to spend time with them and do domestic activities. That means go shopping, sit in the kitchen, do work herself. Not employing a housemaid, a butler, and, and five other people to wait on her. She was a straight talker and she went into it. So if you say that she didn't inspire you as a lady, I, I wonder that because she combined every single facet of the womanhood and then she came into a male-dominated, highly patriotic political system and then she not only survived the first step, she thrived the second term, and she would have rode on for, for a long time, exactly. if not for her conviction. You see, that, that's what I'm saying. If she was ready to stay in office and not be in power, that means not influence anything, she would have even stayed longer. Her intention was not to stay in office. Her intention was to bring change, momentous change, change that will stay on and, 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 and speak about literally for the next 100 years because she changed the landscape. And, yeah. and every lady on, on the planet should look at her and say, yes, if she can do that, any lady can rule men, can be asked to lead men, can be asked to deposit real talent that you have in you, express it, whether it be in politics, whether it be academia, whether it be in sports. No, you, you've got to be able to prove, to do something. Yeah, do something with the talent that God has given you. God has given you. Definitely. Let's look at Mrs. Thatcher's uh, school, her college, um, Oxford University. How did it affect her leadership potentials and her female education? Now, at Oxford, you had literally had a one-to-one -one, uh, tutorial. That means either yourself and your professor, or yourself and your professor and one other student. So you didn't have any hiding place. And so you had to do your coursework or your assignment, and they come in and defend it. So literally, if you had a class of 20 students, then you can hide. If you have a class of 20 students, then you can give excuses. She was made not to be able to say, look, I couldn't do this because of this. And when, it came into, when she came into parliament, she read the briefs of every single minister. If she sent a minister on a particular mission, she knew about the mission. She read it and they came back and was able to interrogate the minister. So that meant if you were working with her at cabinet level, you had to be on your toes all the time. Yeah, you, you, couldn't, you, could, you couldn't hide. Yeah, yeah. So, so the drilling 
and the leadership training that she got from Somerville College literally turned everything around and refined the grammar school girl that came into Oxford and turned her into a potential uh, formidable force. Not, not every parent can actually send their children to such schools now, definitely, because getting to such schools is actually highly competitive. But parents can actually help their kids imbibe some of the cultures that she actually imbibed in Oxford. Can you throw more light on that? That's a useful comment for you to make. I will probably want to reflect more on that and say, I believe every child can at least have a taste of the Oxford education, either at undergraduate level, postgraduate level, or doctorate level. So if you miss it at one level, come back again and come back until you have a taste of it because of the uniqueness of the Oxbridge um, education. But if you're unable to make it for one reason or the other, understand one fact, that you are there to show that you can do it. That's one. Two, you are there to show that you can independently learn. So, you know, sometimes we have to wait, oh, I've not been taught this, oh, I've, I've not heard about this, so I need somebody to explain this to me. No, you have to be able to know that because it's your area of passion. In your personal statement applying to university, you said this was my passionate area. I won't read any other course except this, and you wrote that in your section seven of your UCAS form. Now you need to demonstrate it by saying, because it's my area of passion, I will go and acquire every information, every knowledge going, everything that I can, I can get hold of, I was going to acquire it. And, and that played a lot when it came to her governance. A lot of students and mates that she met in Oxford were again the people that she um, um, interacted with uh, in government level, and she was now able to understand their psychology. So whether you're a man or a woman, it doesn't make any difference. Because you've had the training, she understood their psychology, and therefore she was able to A, convince them, persuade them, carry them along, and make them see her point of view and was able to therefore lead a group of people that would otherwise have just poo pooed any lady that came around and said, who are you to talk to me? Who are you to tell me? You're here to listen to me. And the fact that we, we made you a lady as the prime minister, we want you to be a figurehead. So I can remember a member of the cabinet saying, oh, she would just be like the queen because the queen is a non-executive leader. No, she didn't want to be like the queen. She had her hands on the levers of power and she wanted to pull or push depending on what she felt was best for the nation. Which means emphasis should be laid on independent learning. Parents can actually teach their kids how to learn wherever they want to go into, whatever course, independently. Independent learning and continuous learning. Because if you acquire the skill to independently learn, it means that you always learn and therefore be able to acquire new knowledge. And when there is a dynamism, when they are changing pace, you are able to therefore move with it. You become an early adopter of technology. You become an early adopter of any philosophy going. Why? Because you have been able to research that area and leapfrog sometimes, go past people that have already have that body of knowledge and think that because they have a certificate in an area, they are authorities. She, she believes that you don't have to have a certificate in an area, you just have to have an interest in it. And she read, and she read, and she read. Thank you, Dr. Chris. Now, okay. viewers, if you want more information on how to learn from the legacy of Baroness Margaret Thatcher, you can actually log on to www.themarkedons.com. Okay. Let's look at one of the things that have actually bothered a lot of politicians and even parents in this country. Uh, the riots that took place last year, the high percentage, the higher percentage of those that took part in the riots were actually needs. Yeah. These are our youths that are not in education not in employment and not in training. But you will be speaking to some of these NEETs on the 1st of May. Tell us some of the content of your talk. Yeah, um, Sonia, um, a lady that um, I have worked with a lot of youths and have inspired uh, quite a few people, Sonia Maggie, um, spoke to me after the careers day and said, oh, do you mind coming to, to just speak to the, the youths in the area? And then I, I said, okay, we'll consider it. We chatted and then we agreed, so yes. Because what I don't understand is that youths are the prime of their physical ability, intellectual ability. How can you then say that with such a huge blessing, you wanted to lay waste? Because you are right at the peak of, of, of things. If you don't engage and use their energy, and use their time, and use their effort, somebody else is going to take it and abuse it. So you might as well get them to know that A, there's so much going for them. B, the opportunity is vast and completely endless. C, there are a lot you can do for yourself now than your grandparents or your great-grandparents would have imagined. 
So every youth that believes they are not in education, you have to think again, because education gives you these tools, it gives you the skills to be able to use your talent to the best of your community and then profit from it. Because profiting is a, is a good thing, so it's, a, it's not a dirty word. It, because if you sow a seed, you expect it to grow and then you, you expect to, to harvest from it. So I'm, I'm not against you, that's why I, I tell them, you can be a multimillionaire based on your skills. If you develop your skills, hone your skills very well, and then market it or make it available to somebody who will find it useful or somebody whose problem is being solved by your creativity. Because youth are extremely ingenious if you allow them to flow in their area of interest. Really, education is beyond the four walls of a classroom. Now, what can our government do to actually motivate our youth to continue their education and be involved in continuous learning? Our government must re-educate us and reorientate us to think that education is one thing, certification is another. If you get a piece of paper at the end of an exercise saying that you have now passed a degree or passed a diploma, that's a certification. That can also occur without a piece of paper, you now have a skill. Or you say, oh, I didn't know this. Or oh, I just found out that, oh, mobile phones have cameras that can be used for broadcasting. And therefore you explore that and explore that and, and film and upload them into a particular website or film and upload them into, onto a particular blog. Or what are they doing? That's, that's a skill. skill. That's a skill yeah. you are developing. But because you don't have a piece of paper, you might say, oh, no, that's not useful. Oh, no, of course it's useful. It solves a problem. It helps communication. It assists people that were inquiring about an issue before. They, they go do a search on the internet and they're able to pick up your blog. So you are very, very useful. There is no member of our community that does not have a function for this community. If every single shed I have in my wardrobe has a purpose, I use some in my summer, I use some in my winter, every shoe, pair of shoes I have has a purpose, every human being created has a purpose. And as a youth, discover that purpose. So we, we, on, on the 1st of May, we're going to go through the exercise. You discover your purpose, you discover your gifting, you see how you can develop that gifting, then you see how you can isolate that and make that beneficial to people around you. Quite a lot of information for our youths to learn. It's not just for needs, so viewers, you can actually log on to www.theimafidons.com for more information on the talk that will be taking place on May the 1st. Now, let's look at our parents. What would they learn or gain from the webinar that is coming up on the 15th of April? Yeah, 15th of April is a, a webinar that says all you need to know about your GCSE and how to help your child with the GCSE. How you can help a child doing an art paper in GCSE, a social science paper, a science paper, and a maths paper. Because the different strands of knowledge being tasked are done slightly differently. And you don't have to leave location. I know some people say the webinar is taking place in London. No, it's, although it's being hosted in London, any machine, any computer, any computing device from any part of the world can log into it and be able to follow through. So if you have a high school student that feels very demotivated or has had real rough time in school or they've had teachers that have been on erratic, that means you've not had continuous flow of teachers so for one reason or the other, then it's a useful thing for you to log into. The parents have a role to play. We're just mentioning uh, um, Lady Tasha now. What role, what supporting role can you play? You have to be the number one fan of your child. If you're not the number one fan, number one fan to do what? To chair, you have to be the cheerleader. Say, oh yes, they, that is, did you have that as difficulty? Don't worry, let me even see how I can get resources or let me see how I can help you. You must not shy away and say, I'm not a subject specialist because I'm not a subject specialist, I don't know anything about it. No, not in the Google area or not in the so-called search engine area. We can use most search engines to be able to get things out. So we'll give you a list of resources you can, you can use. We'll give you how to get hold of real tough past papers that your son or your daughter can do. If your son or your daughter does the tough past papers, when it comes to the new papers, then it's easier. So we tell you how to get legacy papers if, if you have problems with that. If you, have, if you have issues with using the web, we'll be able to demystify the web for you because some parents are still very techno, almost technophobic. I, I don't know why anybody would be technophobic when all of us today depend on technology. So it's, it's a useful webinar and it's free. You don't have to pay anything at all. So it's free information for you. <laughs> Where it will be taking place in London? It will be taking place in London. It will be hosted, uh, I think, uh, Queen Mary um, 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 kindly donated their facility for us. 
And so it's be, yeah, Queen Queen University will be, um, be made available to you. But you don't need to leave home. You don't have to cancel appointment. You don't have to travel halfway through the, uh, the city. You, can, you should see that home. If I were, I'll see that home, click on the computer, and then just follow proceedings. Thank you so much, Dr. Chris. Thank we are you. running out of time, and we look forward to having you again. Thank uh, you for coming. Pleasure. Viewers, remember this is Education Talk. Now to get more information about the webinar that is coming up on the 15th of April. For parents, you can log on to www.demarfidons.com. Meanwhile, there are so many resources there on how to help your child excel in class. Remember to send us emails to educationtalk at loveltv.co.uk. In the meantime, have a lovely time and enjoy the rest of our programs. <laughs>